I've been using this iPhone SE 2020 as my primary phone since it launched about two months ago, and I thought it would be the best way to get a feel of what a $400 iPhone feels like versus the $1,100 iPhone 11 Pro Max that I was using prior to this. I wanna talk about all of the things that impressed me about the iPhone SE and one major downfall that made me regret the switch and why I'm so glad to be back on this. Let's get right into it. Okay, so the biggest thing that I had to get used to is the size of the phone and the size of the display. It's refreshing in a way because it's so much lighter and more compact in your pocket, but I find the screen to be a little too small for my liking. Now, if you're coming from an iPhone 8, this is exactly what you're used to. And after I used it for a couple of days, I got used to it. But this thick forehead and chin combo is really showing its age, but definitely gets the job done. Even after two months, I still find it harder to type since I'm so used to a bigger display, but it's easier to use with one hand, so it depends how you look at it. When you're indoors, the display is perfectly fine, but viewing in bright sunlight is a bit of an issue. The more expensive iPhones definitely have a brighter screen. The dual speakers are surprisingly good and get nice and loud, but at the maximum volume, it does get a little bit tinny, but besides that, it's really solid. Going back to the fingerprint scanner for me wasn't that bad actually. It's still relatively quick once you get used to it, but it did make me appreciate how good Face ID is. It's actually a lot quicker in most instances and it's more intuitive, but I have to admit it's so much easier with Touch ID when wearing a mask. I really didn't appreciate this until all this madness happened. What's great is I didn't find my daily experience to be much different and that largely has to do with the power that's inside of the iPhone SE. This has the same A13 processor that is in the more expensive iPhone, so I found the performance to be very good day to day. I do have to say, I think it's a little bit snappier on the iPhone 11 Pro. I did experience a few hiccups here and there and a little bit of stuttering on the iPhone SE, and I think that has to do maybe with the limited amount of RAM. But for the most part, nothing changed. I was still able to use Apple Pay, which I'm doing a lot more of these days, and the smaller size iPhone SE made me really appreciate the classic cases like the Slim Armor CS from the channel sponsor Spigen. I loved using this convenient card holder built into the case so I don't have to worry about bringing my wallet with me. Most of the time, this type of case would add a little too much bulk for me, but this is not the case at all. I found myself using this combo a lot, especially when exercising or going for a bike ride. It just made me fall in love with the case all over again, and the red color just complements the product red so well. But you know me, my go-to for almost every phone is the Ultra Hybrid because I love clear cases, especially when they show off such a stunning color. It adds the right amount of grip and gives me the protection I need with the Fortify corners and that nice lip around the screen. And thankfully, I have not dropped this phone in the two months that I've used it. That's a record because usually I drop it within the first two weeks almost every time. So I'm really happy about that. The most exciting part is the perfect match for my AirPods Pro. Yes, there is an ultra hybrid for these now. I was super stoked to see these released. This is a beautiful pairing. Let me know what you think about this combo. If you're interested in picking these up for your iPhone SE, I will leave a link down below for you. Right now, I'm using the Neo Hybrid. This was my go-to case back in the day. I don't know if you remember the ones a while ago with the metal frames. Those were my absolute favorites. I love the texture clash with the grip, but the smooth corners, this red pops, I really dig it. So follow me on social and I'll let you know how these cases hold up over time. But so far, so good. When you look at the big picture, the iPhone SE looks too good to be true. You get the same power inside as the bigger and more expensive phone, great build quality with nice materials like you would expect on an Apple device, IP68 water resistance, a solid camera on the back with the best 4K video on the market. That is a lot for a $400 phone, so what are you really sacrificing when you're using the cheaper iPhone? So let's talk about the things that I miss the most about going from the best that Apple has to offer to the best value that they have. I have to admit, I miss having the extra lenses on the back, especially the wide angle. Sometimes I just wanted that wider field of view or I wanted that extra reach with the 2X and I really found myself missing it. The digital zoom just isn't great, but I guess that if you're used to just one camera, then you'll never know what you're missing because you never had those cameras, so I guess this complaint is moot. I am going to say that there's only one camera on the back, but it's a damn good one, and I think most people will be very happy with it. The images are full of dynamic range with smart HDR. You even get portrait mode with just one lens, even though it's limited to just people, but at least you get that option. 
and you get pretty much the best 4K video that you get on a smartphone still with up to 4K 60 frames per second, which is great, but you do lose that extended dynamic range where on the more expensive iPhones, they have that, but I'm betting a lot of you will not care in this price point. If you're wondering how the latest SE compares to the iPhone 8 in photos, I did a full camera comparison between the two, so make sure you watch that. It really shows how much the processor and image processing makes a difference since the camera is basically the same hardware as the iPhone 8. The low light though suffers because it doesn't have a built-in night mode. I really wish that Apple would have included this, but overall for a budget iPhone camera, it delivers above the quality that you would expect, so the camera is solid. So I said in the beginning of the video that there was one major downfall with my experience and that unfortunately is battery life. This phone regardless of optimization has a small 1821 milliamp hour battery because of the small size. I know battery life is subjective and everyone uses their phone differently but here is my breakdown of my experience with the battery with the iPhone SE in the last two months. I wirelessly charged every night which was super convenient. Got to give credit for that being in there for a budget phone. If I used the phone moderately, I could make it through the entire day. Phone would die around 8 or 9 p.m. And I think a lot of that has to do with the screen brightness. Most of the time, I had to keep this phone on 100% brightness for me to enjoy it. I did some tests where I lowered the screen brightness to 50%. And while that wasn't a great experience, I did get much better battery life. Where I struggled was on days where I was on social media more because I released a video or using that camera more that day because I went out with the family. In these cases, the phone would die around 3 or 4 p.m. And since I'm a heavy user, this really affected my experience. So I ended up topping up a lot of times during the day where I was really conscious on what my battery life was like before I left the house. Where with my iPhone 11 Pro Max, I didn't have to. And some days it was just really frustrating. To be fair, this is not really a good comparison because the iPhone SE is so much cheaper than the iPhone 11 Pro Max, but even other Android phones within this $400 price point have better battery life. So if you're going to buy this phone, just make sure you carry around a battery pack with you. Hey, it might not be a big deal for some because you're used to doing this on your current phone. But for me, ultimately, this is what made me regret switching to the iPhone SE. Even though I had to for the two months, I was dedicated to sticking to this phone, but it was a really big deal for me. So I wanna know, is battery life a deal breaker or do all of the other awesome features make up for the lack of battery life, let me know in the comment section below. I'm really curious. So in the end, the iPhone SE 2020 is literally the best value Apple has, period. And yes, you have an older rehash design and it does look outdated for smartphones today, but the core stuff for the most part outside of the battery life is met with a fantastic camera that creates great photos and has the best 4K video on the market. And the fact that you will get software updates probably for the next three to four years or even beyond is crazy, especially with the newly announced iOS 14. This phone will even get all of those features. The appeal of this phone is real. This is perfect for your kid's first phone. This is also a great budget option for the entire family, or this is a perfect smartphone for a person that doesn't want all the bells and whistles, but just wants their phone to work well. So let me know, do you have an iPhone SE and what is your experience like and has it been similar to mine or is it totally different? Let me know in the comment section below. If you are picking up an iPhone SE, then make sure you check out the hot speaking products. I will leave a link to them down below. You will not regret it and also pick up a battery pack and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.